All right, so this is Cade Ivy, and here I'm going to explain to you the basics of the Eaton FRO transmission. Well, FRO is for overdrive, but it's basically the FR series transmission. Uh, it's a pretty good transmission, most commonly seen in 10 speed configuration. Um, this is going to be a brief overview, and also I'll make another video detailing the RT series transmission, which is a good bit different, and I'll show you here in a second. So, this is an FRO transmission, Eaton Fuller. Um, this is a 10 speed, it's an FRO 15210B, which is the FR series transmission. The O after FR stands for overdrive, so FR overdrive dash 15210B. So the last, the other breakdown of those numbers is 15 is the torque, uh, torque out, the torque input it can take plus 50 foot pounds. So it's a 1550 foot pound torque, uh, foot pounds of torque capable transmission. And then the 10, the, the two, I'm not sure what that is. And then the 10 is the number of gears. So 1550 foot pounds of torque, two, and then 10 gears. And then B, is the ratio of the transmission you have a b c um, all different ratios so this is the basic transmission here this is the front box right here um this this one was damaged in a truck that's why it was taken out um i'll explain in in a second what happened to it but these are the shift collars they slide in and out between the gears and that's how you select gears so these gear this this set of gears right here is fourth and fifth and ninth and tenth um, this is another, this, it has three shift collars. Um, your lower gears are back here in the back. So also this is, it actually, it actually starts down the back with reverse. So this is your reverse gear. This is your reverse idler. And then your, uh, when, yeah. And then your reverse main shaft is down low and down low here. Um, what well, is up here right there and then down low on the other one. And then you have, First gear here, first and sixth. So this is first, and that's the gear it drives against. Um, this is second and fifth. Those are the gears it drives against. Um, this is third and seventh. And this is fourth and eighth. And this is uh, fifth and tenth. Um, now you notice I skipped over this gear. This gear is the PTO drive gear. So you have these plates here on the bottom of the transmission. I'll show you here. That plate right there is for a PTO. And then there's one more plate right here. On this side, it's a six bolt plate for the PTO. So each one of these uh, counter shaft gears here, this big one with the big teeth, does drives a PTO. So... Um, that covers the front box. Now on this front box here, the failure we had was the lack of lubrication caused damage to the main drive gear. So this is the main drive gear right here. Um, and what happened to it is lack of lubrication caused the teeth to start to bind up and that put pointed edges on this tooth. This tooth is supposed to have, uh, flat spots on the teeth like this one here. But this to, this gear wore down enough that these uh, edges became almost razor sharp, and they're real close to rounding off. And what happens is, once the transmission gets too hot, um, all of these teeth here will round off, and then your truck isn't going anywhere. So all these gears rotate while the uh, clutch is released and the engine is turning. So let me check and make sure all these all these clutches are disengaged here, disengaged, disengaged. Now, when I rotate the input shaft up here on the front, all of these gears turn right here until the rock goes into it like that. But all these gears turn. Um, and so, and there's our back box gear right there. It's going forward because that's where the majority of the gears are going. Now, if I engage this gear right here, if I engage that side clutch, push it into that gear, this, uh, this back gear here stays with me. It goes a, a, a set speed. Um, I disengage this here and then I can engage this one for reverse. You can see it turn the other direction if it'll cooperate with me here. There we go. And you can already see my hands getting real nasty. These transmissions are disgusting. Um, and now, now it rotates the opposite direction. You can see my reverse idlers are now transmitting power. Um, 
So that's the front box. It's pretty simpler. It's pretty simple. Sorry. Um, that main drive gear is going to be the most common failure. When it fails, you have to replace that main drive gear, this uh, counter shaft gear, and that other counter shaft gear right there. Um, also, these shift clutches can, can start to tear up. They get worn down here. Um, you can see on the faces of this. Let me let me try and get this to where you can see it. Um, okay. Um, all right. You see where my finger is? See those little those slanted surfaces right there? They don't come from the factory this way. The more you grind gears and miss gears and do things like that, you grind those surfaces into slant. Now they're not like this surface here that I got my fingernail on right now from the factory. They're just shaped a little bit differently. But as you grind gears and whatnot, you, uh, you wear them down and eventually they can wear down really far back, like all the way back to there. And then it won't, the transmission won't even hold gears anymore. Um, and keep this in mind also while those, while this portion here is wearing, the part that it mates with on the gear is also wearing. It's inside the gear. I can't show it to you, but maybe I can. Um, but it's also wearing, uh, right down there, you can see it right now, a clear shot. That piece also wears, and if, and if the collar and the gear wear too much, your transmission will pop out of gear and you won't be able to hold gears anymore. Um, see, that shift collar right there looks a little better than this one. So that one has been caught more regularly because it's, it's a higher gear, so it's easier to catch. Um, now let's move on to the back box. The back box is also where we had a failure in this transmission due to lack of lubrication. So this transmission was pretty well messed up. Um, what we have here is this is our our back box main drive gear. And the problem we had with it was when the oil went away, the synchronizers, which rides on this ring here, the synchronizer ate up um, and pretty much got down to bare metal, which I'll show you in a second. The, the synchronizer has a synthetic material that's supposed to be... Uh, made onto it um when it tore up whenever you'd flick the range splitter up it would grind when it would go between the gears so when you went from fifth to sixth it would grind so and and that was evident also here with these teeth they're all real rough um you can tell where they've been catching and grinding and, and it's not good for this gear this gear would have to be replaced um so now i'm going to show you this actual back box portion let me flip it over here so i can show you what got screwed up Alrighty, so this is the back box of the transmission. Uh, this is a 10 speed, so it only has two sets of gears. You have your low your low range and your high range. Um, these these gears closest to me are the high range, and then those big that big reduction there, that's the low range. So none of these gears have the uh, torn up teeth or anything like the front one did, but this synchronizer here is what I was getting at. Um, this synchronizer here, this is the synchro surface. And let me take a rag here and wipe this off. The synchro surface, this piece is supposed to have a, I'm not sure what the material is made out of, but it's some kind of synthetic material that as the shift collar is pushed this way by the piston, um, as it's pushed this way, that synchronizer right there grabs onto the tapered surface of this gear here and helps smooth the transmission of those teeth coupling into these teeth on the gear but when the synchronizer tore up because of lack of lubrication now this uh synthetic ring no longer grabs this tapered surface here and so this set of teeth and that set of teeth are just forced together they just it just tears it up um so that would have to be replaced this synchronizer would need to be replaced um so this is the big fork that does your low and high range right here so um, as you split high to low, this fork moves in and out like so. Um, now, when you're shifting these transmissions, the way the fullers are designed, which is an excellent design, uh, you can only split range when the transmission itself is in neutral. So when you shift, so you can flick the splitter up in fifth, and then when you move to sixth, it'll automatically do the split for you. You don't have to keep time with the split while you move your shifter which is a nice feature um and it's actually the proper way to drive that transmission is to split it and then and then make the gear selection to sixth or from sixth down to fifth um 
Now this this yoke here on on the, this is specific to the FRO transmission. This yoke here, the yoke shaft goes through this hole right there where you can see that snap ring indention. And that's where the yoke shaft slides in and out. Um, and it, it actually appears right there when the transmission is assembled. Now, the piece that actuates the yoke is on the transmission top, which I will get to in just a second. Um, back here, you have your yoke and your speed sensor. So this little reluctor ring right here is tightened in with the yoke. When you tighten up that yoke nut, it keeps this from slipping. One common failure of when you can have speedometer issues is if this nut right here has come loose, this speed sensor, I mean this speed ring, is not uh, splined onto the shaft like this yoke is. So it can spin however it wants if this yoke nut is loose. And that can cause an erratic speedometer, cause a couple other issues. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And on this transmission here, behind this metal plate is a seal. And so the transmission rear output seal rides on that uh, speedometer tone ring. It has a smooth machine surface on the inside. Um, one more thing I forgot to tell you about. On this transmission input shaft, there is no uh, there is no actual lip seal as you are accustomed to if you're working on if you're accustomed to working on equipment. Um, the input shaft is actually just spiral cut to prevent oil from coming forward into this case. As the transmission spins in whichever direction it spins, I'm not quite don't quite remember. It actually draws oil back into the transmission and prevents it from spilling out the front. Um, one thing is normal for this transmission to have a little bit of play like this. I believe this is a little bit excessive, but um, some play is normal. Um, common things to watch for here is this shaft being torn up. It, it'll just have a it'll have a wear line right about there where the pilot bearing sits. That the pilot bearing is seized up. So that's one thing to keep in mind is check to make sure the diameter is the same all the way around. Check these splines here to make sure they don't have wear marks or where the clutch plates would have been dragging and catching. And that can cause uh, uneven clutch applications and clutch grabbing. Um, I'm about to show you the shift top here. If you give me a second, though, I'm going to pull out a, a input shaft so I can show you what I was talking about. Let's see. Not there. Here's one. Um, this, these, those two rings right there are actually, they actually rotate in a spiral pattern and they help push oil back into the transmission. So that's what the input shaft looks like right there. Now this right here is a shift top. Let me grab this right quick. Um, this shift top has big forks on it. And what it, what it does is it actually shifts all the gears inside the transmission. So these forks align with the shift collars that you have in the top of the transmission. Man, give me one second. So these shift forks right here, these shift forks here align with those collars inside the transmission when you put the top on. And that's how you shift your gears um, then you also have the, that range I was talking to you about. This is the range splitter piston right here. When you flick up and down, this piston moves in and out and it does your, it does your low and high range. Now these transmissions, they use a really funny setup. Uh, I'm not too big a fan of it for actually se selecting the gears. It has this common rail here that the shift stub goes into that as you, as the rail turns left to right, it selects a different fork. So as the rail turns left to right and you move it in and out, it selects a different one of these forks to use for your gear selection, which is kind of strange. Um, another thing that makes this a bit more difficult about these transmissions is this piston here. On the RTX model transmission, this piston is actually built into the back box right there. So you don't have to do any major disassembly of the transmission to reseal it should it start leaking. This transmission, this piston will sometimes leak when the transmission, when the truck is cold and it'll, it actually won't shift from high to low and all you'll hear is a bunch of air leaking and 
it's a real pain to change because on most trucks, these transmissions are kind of jammed in there. So uh, it's almost impossible to take this top off the transmission while while the truck while the transmission's still in the truck. So that's not really that's not something I'm very fond of, but that's just what you got to deal with. Um, on the top side of this, you have this is where your shifter stub goes. So the actual shifter stub stick sits right there in that uh, piece right there, and it will turn left to right as it selects a as it selects one of the forks on the shaft. And you have your reverse switch right here. You now this is your module for the high low range. Now remember I told you with the Eaton Fuller transmissions, when you select a gear, I can be driving in fifth, be in the bottom of fifth, go ahead and pre-select my gear. I mean go ahead and pre-split my gear, right? And then go back into first, which is now sixth. And it will do the range shift for me. And that's because of this device right here. This device tells the trans, tells the, uh, transmission when, when, when it is in neutral and then allows the air to flow into the piston below here to split the back box. Um, if that seems a little confusing, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll try and clear that up for you. But these are the little hole, this little, uh, fitting and this little fitting come from your shifter knob, your little air shifter knob, and this is your input airline from your truck to actually supply the piston. And let's see if you can see it down here. No, you cannot. Right back here is where, right back in that spot right there, there's a little yoke. And when the transmission is in neutral, that's when it allows this piston to move in and out. So, overall... That is a basic overview of the FRO series transmission by Eaton Fuller. Um, if you have anything you'd like to know or any specific questions, just uh, leave me a comment or ask about it, and I'd be more than happy to explain it to you. Thank you.